um, you were saying that you just saw the market crash and um, you just saw the other stocks going up. You made a, a nice amount and then um, day trading was completely different. So um, can you dive into that a little bit? In a sense, when I started day trading, I think that was around May last year, um, it was just much quicker, right? I mean, these huge, like large cap stocks, they obviously move much uh, slower. And then the day trading for me, it was a huge adjustment because it is just, you really have to be on your feet and you have to make quick decisions. So I think that was the, uh, for me, the, the turning point where I thought I have to put now more time, education, uh, energy into this because it's not as easy as it might look you know, <laughs> just right after a crash. <laughs> yeah, well, it seems like you just shot up out of nowhere and because no one really sees the amount of work that people put into their education. And I know for me, I've been studying as much as I can, but when you watch video lessons or read books, it's different than screen time and actually practicing. So what did you do to prepare for day trading? Like, how did you study? I think it's exactly what you said. And I also believe in that um, the harder you work, the luckier you get, right? <laughs> yes. And I spend um, at least 10 hours a day doing it. Um, I would say a little bit less on the weekend. But during the day, I'm there starting at 7 o'clock, and I usually finish at 4.35 reviewing my trades. And I'm in the market all day long. Um, that doesn't mean that I trade all day long, as you well know, but um, I observe it pretty much all day. And then my education I get in over the weekends, um, obviously when we have live webinars, I mean, that's part of my trading day, right? Right. But I do a lot on the weekend. Um, I'm like you, I'm a mom. Um, I uh, have a pretty busy schedule. I still have a part-time job. So uh, I love audiobooks. And uh, whenever I have to drive, whenever I have to walk the dog, I do audiobooks. And that has helped me tremendously. I mean, there are some books where you can't do it, like charting, you know, learn how to chart with Steve Neeson book, for example, that I, that I read. But um, I read a lot on, or I listen, or I read, listen um, a lot on trading psychology, and that you can do very easily on the run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, when you're reviewing your trades, what are you looking for and how are you uh, looking to improve when you're going over them? So... I think today my biggest problem is cutting losses quickly. Um, I have gotten much better in it, but it's still a little bit challenging from time to time. So what I really look is my entry point and my exit point. That's where I look. I had like almost a perfect trade on Friday on ALF, where I caught it in the afternoon. I caught it on this basically fish hook on the swing up. So that was ideal to me. but. Sometimes it's not that ideal. And um, so that's what I look for. Basically, how, how can I improve myself? How could I have timed the entry better? Which I think that's for me usually is going okay, but a little bit more where you could have gotten out probably a little bit earlier on losing trades. And if you don't mind my asking, um, what size of account do you use? Because uh, like position sizing, I, that can be where some people see um, people making like thousands of dollars in gains versus hundreds. And so uh, what's your account size, if you don't mind my asking? No, my account size right now is um, I usually trade with like 17K. Um, so I took some money out, you know, back and forth. But right now it's 17K, um, but I have a cash account. So um, for me... I usually only have, I'd say, up to 8,000 a day settled cash, which I can trade. Um, and I have to say, compared to my account size, I would say I trade fairly small because I usually do $1,000. Well, let's say right now I'm trying to increase it a little bit, but I put in $1,500 per trade. Um, I had people ask me already, why don't you trade larger? Because, and it's true, because I have like usually four or five fifteen hundred dollar trades per day right mm -hmm. um why don't you just do one 5k trade it saves you a lot of energy um you only need eight percent let's say compared to what i'm doing here <laughs> yeah but i'm just not to be honest with you i'm not comfortable enough um because if i have a fifteen hundred dollar trade and even let's say i would lose 
10, 20%, which obviously is less than ideal. Well, let's say I would blow up the entire trade. It wouldn't really hurt me. So I'm trying to still stay a little bit on the safer side. And that's really smart um, because the wins, when they're good wins, I they're great. And that's yeah. a good size, especially with the market right now. Um, I was watching uh, Bryce Tui's YouTube video last night and um, the new Twist episode and Dan Irish's episode too. And all of them were talking about the same patterns. Seems like Bryce was having a little better... Um, it's not luck, but better, um, I don't know, better odds than the other traders. Because um, when they've been doing that spike consolidation, basically spike pattern, um, Dan Irish was talking about how um, you would used to be able to buy when it broke out of that consolidation and then be able to hold for a little bit and lock in gains along the way. But in his review, he was talking about two minutes like max and then the stock's going down you think that it's gonna hold the level and it just keeps going down so last night it was nice watching those videos because that's exactly the same issue that I was starting to run into um, especially practicing the, practicing the listed stocks um, what do you mostly trade OTCs listed both yeah, I have a little advantage right now, I would say, because I my main forte is listed stocks. And I started with them, and I'm much more comfortable in them because that's my bread and butter, so to say. When I joined Tim's Challenge in November, that's honestly when I really got into OTCs. Um, almost it's a tad too late. And for me, OTCs, sometimes they're still a little bit overwhelming, especially stock pennies. Um, that's really, that's a little much. Um, I see more and more the patterns, obviously, they're a little bit clearer. I can see that, you know, the, the, the multi-day breakouts, mm -hmm. the clip dive, that, that's smoother. Um, but I like my NASDAQs. And um, I'm, it's my, funny that you mentioned uh, Bryce, because I'm with him in the small cap rockets, uh, in the um, stocks to trade breakout room. So I see him trade all day. And he's very impressive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the others are as well, but uh, Bryce and Matt Monaco, I mean, he's Matt Monaco fan. Um, so I follow them as well. And yeah, he, he did have good luck, but um, on Friday, I, for example, traded Porch, and I thought that was the ideal afternoon, right? And I was, I had already seven, six percent I was up, so I didn't decide to sell. It looked really good. And then of course, at the end, it got so choppy, and then I still managed to sell it with like three percent gain, which like, uh, wasn't that much. And then it, yeah, kind of dived down and then in the aftermarket it completely picked up again so I yeah some some are really hard to read right now I, I think so uh, my biggest issue with um, trading listed stocks is that darn level two because with OTCs I mean it's usually I mean I hate to say easy because nothing's actually easy but it does yeah. get easier over time um, but you can usually see on OTCs it moves a lot slower, the bids will stack up, and you can kind of tell when it's going to go upwards a lot, for me, a lot easier than listed stocks. Plus, I'm so out of practice with listed stocks. Um, but with OTCs, you can see the bid stacking, so you can put your order in on the ask and or above the ask and typically get filled into strength versus like listed stocks i'm trying to trade the same pattern that spike consolidation buy when it breaks out of the consolidation but by the time that i feel comfortable and see it going up out of the consolidation the level two's already jumped 30 cents and so now i'm 30 cents behind and now my risk to reward isn't as great but i mean how do you handle that level two? Because also, I've seen it go like up 30 cents, down 15, up 10, down 20, and it just seems so choppy to me. How do you do it? Well, the thing is, um, just a different question. Which broker do you use, if you don't mind me asking? E-Trade. Okay. I think on E-Trade, it might be a little bit easier with level two. I'm using Charles Schwab, and for me, it was always a little bit wouldn't say difficult, but um, I think that just the look that I saw on webinars and stuff, how um, E-Trade looks and how the Charles Schwab level two looks, 
think Charles Schwab to start out with is a little bit tougher to read. So I actually don't rely on Lever 2 so much. And what I'm using is, um, well, I do, but um, I have, um, I use stocks to trade, but mm -hmm. I also use stock charts. Um, and I'm, I have a setup there that I have, honestly, um, I've, I had another paid service where I was part in before Tim. And they created that certain scam on stock charts. And I'm still using that. And that's fairly technical, I would say. It's um, with the RSI, with the MACD. Um, and I have learned from that from the beginning. So for me, just based on all these technical indicators that I had set up in this chart, that's how I basically trade. You know, where the RSI is below 30 means oversold, then it can only go up. So I rely a lot on technical indicators. I would say more than level two. That said, obviously, I always also watch level two. I'm not blind to it, but I wouldn't say I'm level two is my main indicator. Okay, that makes more sense because that's what I've been noticing a little bit is going off of chart patterns and the bigger picture with listed stocks versus like OTCs. Yeah, you have that bigger picture, but you can also pay more attention to the little details. But it, you're the first person I believe that I've actually gotten to talk to that uses that RSI and all these different indicators. Um, what got you into that and like how does it really help you? You said the what 30 indicator? I'm sorry I don't know anything about it. Can you explain it a little bit? Yeah you know what I'm sorry that I'm moving around here but I'm just trying to pull it up so that I can see it a little bit better. So it's basically, it's, um, um, it's a candlestick pattern, right? I mean, the same that we have in any other software. And then the RSI is um, basically a relative strength index. And um, when it falls below 30, so it's, uh, I'm just looking at here, so it's a little banner on the stock chart, right? And it goes from 90 to 10. And it's a little chart that just goes like that underneath the actual stock chart. And when it falls below 30, that means it's oversold. So basically the only way for the stock to go is up. And oh. when it's uh, at like 70, 80 um, or above 70, that means it's overbought. And you can see that also if it's like really going above VWAP. So it's basically it goes in line with, with, with the VWAP. Um, and that's usually when I don't trade it, right? And um, so there are these technical indicator or like the MACD, the moving average conversions and um, you can see if it, 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 it goes above the signal line um, or it goes, does it, if it goes below the signal line, that gives you indicators where the stocks are going. So um, by no means am I the technical expert. Let me just add that. I just, I just learned this on my um, uh, little stock pattern uh, setup. You know, that's as far as I get here. But um, that has really helped me. And um, I can only recommend that. And I think really no no matter what charting software you use. I mean, there are a bunch of these indicators, obviously you can add, it doesn't have to be like stock charts, stocks to trade, they all have it. Mm -hmm. But for me, that has helped me a lot. It get, gives me really a, a clearer overall picture of the stock than uh, just level two. Having said that, that's listed stocks. You know, um, for example, OTCs don't even work on stock charts. That's, it's, it's very much, um, a, a, for me, a, um, a medium to trade listed, listed stocks. That makes sense. I um, also ha I have stocks to trade and I also have Thinkorswim mm -hmm. and now I'm wondering because on Thinkorswim if you add the VWAP indicator it has a line above that and below that so I wonder if that's kind of the same thing where if it gets up to if it reaches the top line yeah. it's um, what overbought and then if it goes below yeah. it's oversold yeah. and usually yeah. those help as the guidelines huh. You know what, I would, I would say, I would really suggest to you to look into that because I think, especially for listed stock, that, that can be a huge help. And I think I'm an outlier in that regard because I, I, I studied a lot before I joined this challenge. Sometimes that's actually a disadvantage for me because I have a different broker. I don't have think, think or swim, think or swim right there. Um, I use a very different setup. So at the beginning, it was a clear disadvantage where I, I didn't know what were people talking about and all the charts were in think and swim and I'm like, why can't I pull this up? And I didn't want to add another software. Um, but now I kind of, now I get a little bit more a handle on, you know, some other methods that are out there. And so I'm, I'm just trying to combine. So 
but my forte yeah, is actually listed stocks and <laughs> that's awesome yeah, yeah. Because that, that makes a lot of sense and you get so many platforms it's hard to choose which one to go with too um, I chose mine just because I, I studied Tim's, I started with his free stuff um, and mm -hmm. studied for several months or like a year before I joined his challenge. So, um, mm -hmm. But I always went 100% off of his videos, so that's what I tried uh, going with, which is why I got Stocks to Trade, E-Trade, all that stuff. And the only reason why I downloaded Think or Swim um, was because like, that's what Tim Grittani used. And so... I totally understand. There's a, a lot of different stuff, but e I had to have E-Trade Pro because watching Tim's video lessons, that that's how I got to see the charts and what I understood, um, or like how you said it was a disadvantage not having it at, in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. So you were saying that um, you start off, was it kind of with investing? Is that how you start off before you start day trading? No, you know what, I wouldn't even call it investing. It, it was just more or less playing around is the wrong word too. But I, I mean, five years ago I bought Tilray and then let it sit in the account for two years. Yeah, it was more investing, but I wouldn't say by no means was that um, very educated. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't make money with it either. It was just basically put your own portfolio together and hope it grows that sort of setup. But, um, I always had a, an interest for it, but I was never very good at it. Um, but I also said, I also having said that, I really never invested time in it. Um, so it was just, just some stock picks I saw on TV, something you know that got recommended that sounded good, and hoping it would grow in the long run. Um, but one know, thing Tim the, says not to do <laughs> was it Jim Cramer? Embarrassing to admit to that, but I think a lot of people are. Oh, let me just buy. buy um, I don't know. Well, I made a lot of money, well, not a lot of money, but I made a good chunk of pocket, uh, pocket, pocket change in NEO, for example, NIO, right? Um, so those were my stocks back in the days, you know, something that's really got hyped. But then a lot of times I kind of missed the sell uh, because we don't look at it every day, right? So those were my early steps, not very successful. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that because I'm, from the sounds of it, a lot of people do the same thing. Um, but you also mentioned before I got to record it um, that you was it you essentially blew up an account. Uh, do you mind talking about those losses? Because I think a lot of people have gone through that. Um, were you not cutting losses quickly? Yeah, I didn't. I never blew up an account, but I, I, I lost a few thousand. I would say. Um, I think I always, and that's why I said earlier, I, I don't trade so big. One trade for two, five. I mean, I would have to like blow up 10, 15 trades in order to lose my account, and I never did that. It was always like a little bit more gradual, right? Where you finally see, oh, this is not really going so well. Um, but, um, and that added up. It wasn't one one loss, it just kept adding up. And now I'm happy to talk about it because I, I, I hope it helps because I think in the, also in the chat, we always see these events, right? Oh, uh, um, price crossed one million, file is at two million, but, I think it's more important to see almost like the road that, that, that got them there, right? It's mm -hmm. more like a road trip, and it's it's never a straight road. It's a, a lot of bumps, it's a lot of uh, toll roads, it's a lot of back and forth, and that's I, I have the same journey. And um, so I think we learn the most from the losses, um, and that's what I did before I joined Ch Tim's Challenge, where I felt like I, 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 I'm really interested, I think I have something going, but I'm just not at my full potential. Um, I, I, there's something lacking. And uh, yeah, so that's when my account, I just got too overconfident, to be honest. Um, uh, overconfident um, and my number number one problem, um, uh, not, not cutting losses quickly. Sitting back, hoping, holding and hope, or especially in the OTC market, oh, it'll be recover, you know, it's just one red day. And next thing you know, this thing tanks for like an entire week. <laughs> and, and you lost 70% of your, your, your trades. Uh, that sort of scenario, I think um, um, that's how I lost my most money. My biggest loss was, and that was actually huge for me, that was um, in March, on March 11th, with, I wrote it out here actually before that, with, um, where did I lose? Um, oh no, in, in May, uh, INCC, mm. and that was just when I was at a point where I increased my trades. It was the first trade when I thought, 
I can go higher now, right? Because I was like texting with people and they're like, really, you should, you should invest more. And I did with that trade and I put in, I think, I don't know, it was very unusual for me, but it was like three, three K or so. And um, I did so well, it was going up and I was up 8%. And that was, I didn't want to have a huge win. I just wanted to make like 10%, 10 to 20%. And it goes to 11, it goes a little bit down. And then the next thing you know, I turn around and this thing completely dives down. And I lost over $2,000. And that was my biggest loss that I ever had. And so after that, it was hard to recover. And um, but it taught me a valuable lesson because right now I'm very good at cutting losses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm. That's that's my number one, number one focus right now to get out quickly because otherwise that can really kill you. Yeah. Um. So thank you for sharing that. Um. When that stock was going down, was it just a big panic? Did you hold it overnight? Did you just hope that it was coming back up? It was, I honestly, I couldn't even get out fast enough. I mean, it was, it was one of, it was just a huge panic. It was a huge panic. I think like either somebody with a, with a huge holding must have just like dumped all the shares because it was, I mean, don't quote me on that, but it was, it was up already. I think it was the third green day. I mean, it was, it was running for a while. It was ready for a panic. <laughs> exactly. And I knew that as well. That's why I only wanted to get eight, nine, ten percent But I mean, on the chart, that looked really easy. I just thought it would happen later in the day. <laughs> <laughs> like the next morning. I, to be honestly, you couldn't look fast enough. I mean, I just looked and then I was shocked and then I thought, okay, now I'm not going to sell because I was hoping for this kind of cliff dive, right? Um, so this is just, I do the pattern number five and like get out, you know, um, but it just never did that. <laughs> so I did some, I just got my loss and I'm right back. At first, I regretted it, and now I'm glad because I'm not even sure. I don't think it. I'm not, I don't know that stock. I'm not following that stock anymore. But um, it certainly didn't recover quickly, as far as I remember. Yeah, if I had the a better internet connection, I'd have my other laptop up, or I'd pull it up on this to go over with charts and stuff. But it would it would ruin this whole thing, and so <laughs> we wouldn't be able to understand each other. But yeah, I. One of my favorite patterns are dip buying the morning panics, especially mm -hmm. during that hot market. I was on such a roll, and then just uh, I got so excited getting one after another after another being on point. Then all of a sudden, I my level two reading skills were pretty good for the bounce, but I couldn't read it fast enough when it would um, like bounce for like one minute or maybe two minutes and then be a fake out and then just keep panicking so I start like I swear three maybe even four weeks just I was getting caught in every fake out didn't matter if I waited for the first fake out I'd buy the second bounce and then that uh, would be the fake out and then I'd be like okay they're faking out twice, so I'll buy the third one. Then the one time I try that, the third one would start panicking, and so that just sent me on a losing streak for like three weeks or four yeah. weeks. It, it, and, but they're great to learn from all those losses because it's like, okay, in order to improve, either A, I have to stop this pattern altogether, or I need to get fast at ring the level two so I can cut the loss quickly. And even if it's for a profit, you gotta be fast. And so the losses are the best lessons. And uh, unfortunately, I when you have all these new traders, you can't just say like, oh, this person's gonna succeed, this person's not. Let's talk to this person because I wanna learn from them. And like you said, you hear about all their milestones first, and so you don't get, I mean, you don't know whose journey to pay attention to, and who's not to pay attention to, especially because Tim talks about um, not learning from other newbies, and so yeah. I mean, I I just wanted to jump in on this boat because um, I first spoke to Mariana when she was when her profit lease said she was at fifty thousand, but I didn't even think to record it because I was so busy learning new stuff. So when, uh, um, I'm sorry I didn't message you sooner when I first learned that you were at 30,000. It, it didn't dawn on me until people started asking me to record more. And um, thank you for sharing all this. Um, what patterns do you focus on the most? Um, my number one, well first of all, 
first of all, a big thank you to you. I think what you're doing is, is, is fantastic. And with Mariana, I mean, I mean, only somebody we can all look up to, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I think I really enjoy, I, I watch not everything, but what I really like about you and admire about you, how detailed you are, and how you really review trades and how you apply it to, to, to the teaching. So kudos to that. Oh. Um, I think you're doing a fantastic job. Thank um, you. But <laughs> to go back to my patterns, um, the morning did buy. I think it's 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 my number one favorite too. And it was similar to you. I was pretty successful at it in really the hot market. But then these patterns kind of dried out, right? And I think Mariana said the same um, on a Twitter feed that I thought it was kind of a little what to do now. Um, the other thing that I like, um, it's actually, yeah, intraday is always a little bit tricky. But what you just said to the afternoon, I mean, the OTC swizzle, or sometimes we have the afternoon squeeze, like we had on ALF on Friday. Um, so I like those. And then, yeah, so I, I would say those are, um, first green day I like, um, overnight hold, but that, yeah, yeah that, that can go really well, or sometimes not so much. <laughs> that one's really been tricky, because um, Guyana, I had her on she was probably like a month ago and she, everyone calls her the queen of first green days because that's like her her best play and she's been holding everything overnight and I was seeing that she was getting like 50% gains 10 20 just incredible returns so I'm like hmm all right you're convincing me that first green day overnight holds are back again but i'm still skeptical so the other day i'm like all right alyi it has like a 50 50 chance because i saw one or a lot of the second green days where it would like gap down i'm like oh but it's a perfect first green day it's a nice uptrend all right so within like two minutes um into the close i dip bought it not quite at the bottom but close enough and I held it overnight, but um, the next morning I tried getting out for like a 2% loss, then I swear, I, I, I'll take responsibility for it because ultimately it was my fault, um, but I swear E-Trade changed my order because I tried to get out at .058 I think it was, and I was in at .059. And when I tried selling before the whole panic started, um, I, my order kept getting rejected. And then finally, as it's getting to like 0 0.05, um, I see that I swear E-Trade changed my order to 0 0.05875, which was above the at, or the, the bid, so you couldn't even, uh, it was just a mess. And Ultimately, it was my fault for not checking the confirmation screen, but it overall, and thank goodness I had a small $500 position, but I lost 18%, so a little over 100 bucks on that. And, oh, it, I'm like, no more first green days overnight holds. I'm not doing it until I see, like, 20 in a row where it's like, okay, but I won't touch them right now. <laughs> But I'll trade them intraday. So uh, for yeah. first green days, do you only hold them overnight when you do play them? Or is there an intraday pattern? Mm, say that again, I'm sorry. So for first green days, um, are you only looking to hold those overnight? Or are you looking for like that swizzle kind of pattern? Both. Both, both? actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I watch them first green day. I usually like babysit them all day and see what I get with them. Because the OTC swivel works pretty well on them. And uh, that uh, ALYI, I'm glad I didn't jump into that. I was very close, but I ra ran out of trading profit, uh, ran out of trading cash, and so hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. I actually thought it, would, I thought it would go up, to be honest with you. So I would have been right with you. If, but, um, what, oh, sorry, what were you going to say? No, I just said I have a similar problem than you do. And um, my sometimes Charles Schwab OTC's execution at uh, market open. Are not the best yeah and that's why um it's like I, I like that pattern i mean if it works i mean if it goes like what if you had the other eight i think it was where it's like you can just watch it going up for like 10 minutes that's ideal for me but the minute it goes like this and then crashes i can't get out um i, I can't get filled and that's just not a good scenario mm. <laughs> Yeah, those panics, they're terrible, especially when you get caught in them, because I was trying to sell lower once I recognized it, and you almost always end up selling the bottom. It, yeah, but, always, always. Yeah, it's like catching a falling knife. So does, yeah, exactly. Um, 
Does Schwab... Okay, I've heard Schwab doesn't have commissions, but they charge $50 for F-tickers. At the point, that's uh, after the point place. Yeah, yeah. I, I usually don't trade those. I know that, um, what was it, Twan, no? that uh, Thai Airways? Yeah. T-A-W-N-F? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't trade that. I, I, I probably lost out. But yeah, it's $50. Um, sell, $50 buy. Um, but otherwise, they are commission free for OTCs. Um, but I mean, you, they get paid somehow, right? I think that's why during the day, I, I would say my, my exit commissions are really good. I have to say at market, market open, I, I, maybe it's my account, I, I don't know, but I do have issues sometimes. Yeah, that one's a tough one because um, ever since like COVID, a lot of the the broker oops, the brokers, they've been having issues. And so I, I don't think it's just Schwab. I think it's almost all of them because I've been hearing tons of people complaining, I, including myself. <laughs> but I never know if it's my internet. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, Tim had issues, mm -hmm. and I had that too. I had one, one time, like my whole computer shut down for ten minutes, and yeah, it's uh, like, trust me, it's I had my fair share here too. <laughs> That's so uh, it's so frustrating. Uh, hopefully, you weren't in a trade. <laughs> uh, I think one time I was. Oh, yeah, God. That, that, that wasn't that pretty. Yeah, I, I've seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you ever trade on your cell phone? Yeah, I bought AMC the other day on a breakout. It was, uh, and, and I have to say, um, I'm not the best meme stock trader. I, I'm the first one to admit it because for me, they don't have a clear pattern. I don't really get it. I wish sometimes I would have just bought AMC a year ago, did nothing. <laughs> and then, Invested. Uh, two months, uh, like two weeks ago. But unfortunately, I didn't. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's, it's not my best stock. I think right now I'm like even. But, um, you wouldn't believe it so I, I i kept looking at it the whole morning and i don't recall what day it was and then i had to go to the doctor um and then it just kept breaking out breaking out and then i get out of the doctor's office and i see it on my phone i was like this can't be true i have to buy it we told it fomo and then i bought it but i was very lucky i ended up making 15 percent by the time i got home i wouldn't recommend this strategy but <laughs> i've been watching it for like i really watched it for a week, so I kind of knew the pattern. I knew what to expect. I knew what the chat rooms were talking about. So, so when I came out of the doctor's office, I kind of this is exactly what everybody was talking about. So I, I kind of just banked on that. It wasn't really a complete blind trade, um, but it wasn't ideal, and it worked out. Yeah, is that the day that I went from like thirty to sixty or something like that? Fifty, yeah, thirty to fifty. Like in the seventies, yeah. Oh, yeah, that stock. Oh. Every or that entire run, I watched it go from the 30s to 50s, and I forgot that I think 37 was the breakout, and or maybe it was 35, something like that, and it pulled back, held the breakout level, and it didn't even dawn on me to buy, and it, it's just going up and up. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna chase it. I'm not gonna chase it. I'm not gonna chase it, <laughs> and it just keeps going up, and I'm like, I'm still not gonna chase it. And then when it um, was in the 60s the other day, I'm like, I'll try to dip buy. It. I'm like gosh darn it and then everyone's like it's going to a hundred I'm like oh you said that and it only went to 50 last time <laughs> it, it's so tough to buy the height <laughs> well and then yeah well and like um Karianna was uh talking to me about how she uses um stock twits or I think that's what it's called um, mm -hmm. yeah, stock twits. And so I, I downloaded that on my phone and I'm like, okay, well now I'll be able to see all the people hyping it and maybe that'll give me, um, a better advantage to see that more people are going to be in the stock. Well, every stock I look at, they're all hyping it. And so it's like, well, gosh darn it. Cause I was super excited. A-L-Y-I when I was holding it overnight. More people were watching it, more people were watching it, trying to hype it up. I'm like, okay, this is going to gap up the next morning. This, it tanked. I no longer am going to, I should probably just delete the app off my phone because it didn't help me any. <laughs> but, well, I think uh, that's a lot of fun. There's, there's, there's no final reason to it. I mean, a lot of times you can go by these like hypes, but a lot of times it really doesn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, shoot, if it was in a hot market, I'm sure it would have been up, um, kept going. That's another thing. Okay, so you started May, 
so last year, right? Yeah, yeah, May 20, yeah, the COVID thing. Yeah, May 20. Mm -hmm. How have you been adapting from that super hot market to this, like, choppy mess? Um, yeah, it was a little tough at the beginning. Um, but for me, I have to say, and you might have experienced, well, you, you, I don't know, I think a lot of people who joined in the time that I joined, I think we were also a little bit overwhelmed because it was such a hot market. And I I saw Matt Monaco when I joined, I did his 30 day boot camp and he was at $300,000. And the next thing I turned around and he was over a million. So it was, I think for people who just joined, it was, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's great, but you were always a little bit discouraged too, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I would say the hot market was great, but I was just, it, it, I couldn't take full advantage of it. I was, I think, sometimes still like a deer in the headlights. I mean, I made good wins and it, it, the strategy worked out, but I think I didn't profit to the fullest. So I, I think when it turned, it was pretty tough. Um, and um, it was a little bit, I mean, it was obviously boring more sitting around, you had to be more cautious. But on the upside, that's when I really learned that I had to really focus on my cutting losses, right? Because mm -hmm. that in a hot market, you don't have to use that strategy so much. Because <laughs> when you buy at the right time, stuff tends to go up, right? Um, so I think it was my, more like sharpening trading skills and sitting it out. And it was tough for me because I really like to be um, a part of the action. I like to trade, I love it. So just sitting back in a slow market or on a slow day, for me that was often making not so ideal trades. Um, I wouldn't say that it was huge loss. I mean, even if you cut it two percent, it's just not it's just not great. Um, you know, in these yeah less than average setups. Yeah, and so are you just locking in singles now, or are you still holding a little bit longer? Are you scaling out? How are you doing that? Yeah, scaling for me, I think it's not quite worth it because if I have 1500, you know, and they all say, okay, let's say you're, let's say maybe, maybe I'm in an OTC stock, it's running, um, sell your first portion just as an, like 10%, 20%, or 30%. For me, that's not worth it. What am I going to sell? $200, you know, $300. By the time, I, I'd rather wait than and, and catch the middle. I'm trying to find now a little bit of ratio, like Matt Monica often talks about one to three. So for me, I usually try to get, with my comfortable size, 10 to 20%. That's my goal. Um, and then I cut losses right now. I try to, I usually go in percentages. Um, I used to be like at 5% uh, loss. And you also see this on my profit lead, but that doesn't really work out that well because my average gain is 200 and my average loss is 125. I obviously win more than I lose, but I would think that's less than ideal, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to cut at like 2%, 3%. Um, I try to use more technical indicators. I cut right away when it goes below VWAP, the VWAP because I only do longs. So um, trying to be a little bit smarter about that, but um, I'm kind of getting away a little bit from just waiting for these so this is going to be a 50% gain and I wake up in the next morning and it's up 90%. I mean, it's great when that happens, but I learned from Tim that I rather get out at 20% and if it runs without me, of course, that's really annoying, but that's better than may maybe being at 30% and then the whole thing crashes down. So yeah. yeah, I try singles. I try to do better than singles, but I mean, either singles or 10 to 20%. And, and you're still trading listed stocks more than OTCs? Uh, right now, yes. Right now, definitely, yeah. Uh, okay, and... and it, 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 huh? It, 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 it switches, honestly. I couldn't say... There's no formula for that. I would say last week... This week was a little bit mixed. The week before, I think, mainly listed stocks. It, it always depends. I usually go by the biggest percent gainers. That's, that's where I usually base my trading plan off. And if that's an OTC, it's an OTC. If it's like, um, uh, you know, a listed stock, it's a listed stock. Um, if a listed stock is up in the morning 20%, like we had on Friday, for example, I think the biggest listed stock was up 24%. I'm not going to really trade that one. So either I sit it out or I look a little bit more in the OTC market. Yeah. That day I was, I was kind of wondering what was wrong with... I, I, 
I didn't know if it was my internet, if it was just the day. I didn't know what was going on. But my top percent scanner, the main one that I have on my chart, it only had three stocks on it. And I was like, um, what's going on? And they're all, one was like 18%, I think 26, and I think the highest one might have been either in the 20s or 30s. And it's just like, I don't know how to feel about this. And then I was looking at my watch list. And they're like all red. I'm like, huh? It's like 2019 all over again. <laughs> Cause um, I was I started paper trading in um, 2019, thinking like, okay, I'm gonna practice uh, the setup so that way when I go live, I'm just gonna make money. <laughs> and that I only really started to understand first green day overnight holds dip buying them into the clothes and holding them overnight and like i was writing my blogs about it because i got like a 24 percent gain on this otc and then literally one week before i went live with actual money they all started panicking the next morning like a l y i and then so for that entire covid year I didn't hold a single stock overnight and mm -hmm. I was probably one of the few people that just lost that entire time and well almost the entire time because then I started only focusing on morning panic dip buys on listed stocks and I was like okay well as soon as the stock opens it needs to panic 10% and then I can dip buy it and then um, then I got pretty good at that for like three months and then they stopped happening. And it's like, gosh darn it. <laughs> and then uh, um, that's when I think I started jumping back to OTCs. And then uh, it's like, well, shoot, now all my losses are in commission. So I'm losing two, three hundred dollars because my size is so small trying to learn all these patterns. And it actually wasn't until joining the all girls group chat and Mariana talking about all this stuff and actually helping all of us um, a lot more that I started becoming profitable until my ALYI trade because I couldn't cut fast enough but I mean, what has helped you the most besides like just um, cutting losses quickly I think uh, I can totally relate to what you said and, and it, especially if you put so much effort in a setup or you put so much thought into a stock and then it just goes against every logic, right? It's just like so, such a blow, right? It's so disappointing. Um, so my biggest struggle to this day is the psychology behind it. I think the, 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 the chart setup, I mean, yeah, you can debate it back and forth, and but I think when you spend enough time with it, nobody is perfect, but I think you can see certain trends, right, in patterns. But for me, it's the really, it's, it honestly, it all comes down to the psychology. So what has helped me the most is um, um, somebody, I think, Hadi said it, um, become a consistent loser. And that is so contrary to what I want to be, because I want to be a consistent winner, right? We all want to be a consistent winner. And I'm focusing right now on being a consistent loser because that's the only way I succeed. Um, because if you become too emotional, if you don't cut your losses, you will, you will never be profitable in the long run, right? Um, and I'm talking, you know, um, at, at a different level, what others have, you know, the million dollar traders. You can't do that when, when these losses get out of your hand. So I'm focusing right now on being a consistent loser to take my emotions out of it. And um, I'm focusing on discipline. And that has helped me the, uh, the most. And you will probably laugh, but right now I'm doing so many things to to work on my discipline. I start reading a book. I started m like mini habits. I pick one stock a day that I absolutely cut at three percent. I don't even think about it. It just needs to be cut. So I, that I'm forming the habit in my head that I cut losses quickly. Right? I started. Um, Fasting. I mean, it, 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 it sounds... A, a lot of people are doing that in fasting. In my entire life, I'm trying to bring in discipline. And uh, I started that four weeks ago, after my huge loss there, um, you know, uh, whatever it was, I, where I talked about it earlier. I said something has to change, and for me it was discipline. And so, yeah, my entire 
time right now focuses, trading time, focuses on discipline. And that has helped me the most. And I want to bring it to a point, I know it's, it sounds a little bit maybe abstract, but I want to get it to a point that where I don't think about it anymore. You know, there are no emotions. 3% I cut, 10%, 20% I take it. It's not this like hoping and wishing and uh, uh, thinking about stuff. Um, but be really like Tim is. I mean, you can see it every time he trades. He's like down to three percent. He's out. Mm -hmm. And if this thing goes up thirty percent, I I can't take it. I was like, why did I do this? I think about it all night. And Tim is just like, well, I was on the right path. You know, mm -hmm. I want to come to that point. And like ten, twenty percent, and then just take it and don't wish and hope and oh, now it's at sixty and why this, why that. So that's my my um, that's that's what I I think I see for myself. Um, that's what's really gonna help me. I absolutely love that you mentioned discipline because I I've actually uh, kind of I, I haven't been fasting, but I I love food way too much. <laughs> um, I've actually been doing. No, you look great. Trust me, you don't need to fast. <laughs> well, I've been doing the opposite. So I actually um, started working on a cookbook. <laughs> so I'm eating more. <laughs> But like, um, instead of just eating a whole bunch of junk food, because uh, my family, we're, we don't know what to cook usually most of the time, so it's like, here's a box meal, and then um, here's a whole bunch of junk food, and so my parents are going on a diet, and I'm working on a healthy cookbook, and actually trying to think and invent recipes, because um, a lot of people were, and even... Uh, it's the stocks to trade Instagram and Twitter. They've been saying how it's not the quantity of how much you're studying, but it's the quality of your studying, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, they just tweeted it the other day. And um, here I've watched every one of Tim's 7,000 plus video lessons. I've read mm -hmm. uh, quite a few of his blog posts. Um, a lot of them that he's written in the past, they're, they're no longer there. Um, and I'm getting through all the webinars, but... I've been choosing the specific ones that are for my pattern so I can spend quality time um, just watching those over and over and, and that's really helped but um, I think the discipline of I mean, for me working out working on a cookbook having time for different things that still relate to the market but in different ways it's so helpful and I didn't believe it before um, where everyone's like I wake up at like five in the morning I go work out for an hour and they have the set routine but I I really think there's something there and you you're doing it I mean Steven Johnson I, I still don't understand why everyone chooses fasting though why fasting for you <laughs> Well, that works. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually, I wanted to lose uh, weight, but that, was, that wasn't really the main point. It was just something where I was like, it's also healthy. I mean, I stopped fasting. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not eating for a week, but I like I, I stopped eating at four. And mm. at the beginning, that was tough, right? Um, so it was more this intermittent fasting. But yeah, he does that too, Stephen Johnson. I saw it on his uh, uh, Twitter. I actually made a comment about it, but he didn't. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it. But yeah, <laughs> it's just actually creating these, like, I read a whole book about it, trust me, but it's like, you have to have these mini habits. Let's say you want to get um, fit. Um, start with one push up a day, and mm -hmm. you, you do that. They gave that example. Do that for a month and a two month or two months, and then it becomes a habit. And then you increase it, right? And then you do 10, 20. But it has to become a habit first. And that's for me with cutting losses quickly. And I'm at the beginning, but it works. You know, now I take one stop, and I said, no, I'm not going to look at the chart and hope and wish. Um, I still do, but you know, when you can kind of see a clear downtrend, right? I mean, a stock that really, your ALYI, for example, instead of hoping and wishing, it's just like, no, cut. Mm -hmm. And I need like one like that, where it's just like, cut. Um, and that has really helped me to become more consistent. That makes sense. Yeah, with ALYI, I mean, during the hot market, you could get away with holding through that panic and it would bounce back. So after I, mean, I recognized that my order was completely messed up and why it was getting rejected, I had a chance to cut it 
I mean, it was at 0 0.05 and I had a chance to cut it at 0 0.052 and I'm like, all right, I'll just wait for it to bounce up a little bit more and then I'll cut it. Well, I, I noticed that when it, it didn't bounce up any uh, further than 0 0.052, I just cut it at 0 0.048 um, because I, I knew it was more than likely going to keep going down because that's been the, da uh, the trend lately is just it keeps going down and down and down. Yep, and like no recovery to like day two or three where it finally has its bounce, but nowhere near to where you would cut your losses. But I mean, discipline is just absolutely huge. And so, what would you compare from how you began to how your trading is now, and how do you think it will be in the future? That's a really good question. I think I think I always tried very hard. Uh, for me, it was never um, a situation where, oh, you could have, should have done more, maybe more studying. I would say from the beginning, I was really at it, and I was really, really working my, working very hard to make it work. For me, it was, that was what we just talked about, being more consistent, because I always, I think, was into I always stayed my welcome a lot of times um, on my winning trades, but also on my losing trades. Um, and I think what helped me is, and what I'm trying to become is really a consistent loser. And I think I've become better, better at that. You know, just cutting losses quickly. And sometimes I just go out even. You know, it's it's, it's a yeah. I, I see it doesn't it doesn't work. And a lot of traders, I think, say that you. I think everybody can figure out fairly quickly if a trade doesn't go your way, right? Um, it's just like, instead of like, yeah, talking it away, oh, it's intraday, you know, it's, it's going to develop into a sizzle, we'll just have to wait a little longer. Now I'm just out. And um, I think that's what I'm doing right now. I wouldn't say that I have mastered it, um, but I think moving forward, if I can get better at that, and if I keep my consistency, I really see my win rate go up much more and um, then I think my confidence also increases um, because I know I cut my losses quickly. Maybe I get a little bit more courageous with some trades, um, especially in the OTC market where right now I'm just like, oh, you know, can I get out fast enough if it doesn't work out? So I think that I get more confident doing that and then I can bet higher. My, my goal is to also increase my size that I don't have to hustle as much. <laughs> Maybe I do like one or two bigger trades and then that, that really works out. So that's my goal, I think, for the future. And then once you increase your account, then obviously you can trade higher. And that's an awesome goal to have. And I think you're definitely on your way. <laughs> and so being a consistent loser, how... What do you think that means? I mean, because um, you were saying how you choose that one stock where you cut it really quickly, but I know for people asking about being a consistent loser, like how do you think that? I mean, just everything. What what does that mean? Uh, I think just getting out of trades that don't work quickly. You know, if you don't, if you find out a trade, and I know ALYI is not really the best example, and that's why I'm always a little bit wary with those, because you just can't get out. I mean, that's not a good example. But, I mean, let's say you are in a in, in, in day in the morning, morning, the perfect example of morning dip buys that don't work out. And there are tons of those, especially with listed stocks. It looks really great, and then it goes down, you buy it, and then all of a sudden it's like this. You know, and then just cutting your losses quickly. And I think you have to, whenever you're in a position where the trade goes against you, you go out quick. And you just don't wait until it's down 20 percent and then I do an overnight hold and maybe the aftermarket it picks up. You know, not none of this like hoping and holding. It's just suck. Being um, comfortable with the loss. Right. And that's when the emotions come in because I mean that goes against everything what we want, right? We don't mm -hmm. want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. So that was my biggest problem too. I was like, I can't take this loss, and this is just so awful, and I'm out of trading funds, and now this doesn't work out, and so you kind of, yeah, talk talk yourself into holding. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's exactly what you just said. Um, and and just cut your losses. Don't take it personal. Um, 
stock market doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about your, your portfolio, about your trades, if this is your first winner or your 10th loser. And I think, and I think everybody, or what, what I heard from really successful traders, that's what they all say. Mm -hmm. You don't cut your losses quickly. You, you, I mean, it's basic mathematics. I mean, your winners have to be higher than your losers. Uh, yeah, and I'm glad that they preach that. So basically, overall, because I'm trying to learn your secret sauce, your your che trading cheat codes, as everyone uh, has begun saying since Mariana. Um, basically, I'm you're cutting losses quickly, and then letting the trades that you're familiar with play out, right? Am I? And then, you know what, honestly, a little bit what you said, I know where I'm good at right now. And these are the morning dip buys, and I work very focused. Uh, it's exactly like you. Um, I don't waste my time on shorting right now. Um, I, I, I get to that, I hope, because like Dan Irish, I mean, a lot of, tons of people, tons of people, they're really, really good at it, right? For funny, I mean, number one. But um, it's not me. I mean, I haven't even mastered uh, yeah, first green day. I mean, you know, that's just for me. I, I have these like one, two, three patterns right now. I want to master them. I want to get really, really good and comfortable at it. Um, so I trade very focused. I think that's what what I'm good at. I know what I know, and that's where I focus all my energy. And um, a lot of this chat room chatter, and I blend it out. I don't, I don't, you know, it's like a little bit tunnel vision what I do in trading, and I think that really helps me. And um, I also, if there's nothing in the market, I walk away. Um, it's I, I don't linger around, you know. I, I do a webinar then or do something else. But I try to get out when I see I'm not mentally in the right mood. Um, I, I um, have a doctor's appointment coming up. I, I mean, what Tim basically say, do I have time to watch it? And if it's no, then I just do something else. So I think it's like I, 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 I try to be very focused in my approach. I think that's I know, a great. As you said, I, I work very hard. Um, I, I prepare a lot. I really am very prepared in the morning. I get up like similar to you. I mean, I'm up at seven by seven thirty. I know exactly what I want to trade. Basically, um, I have my setups. I have my charts pulled up by by nine o'clock. So I'm not stumbling in the market at nine thirty. <laughs> <laughs> when do you make your watch list? Because I make mine at night once my son's asleep and I have like an hour to focus or two, however long it, it takes me. And for me, it's always in the morning because I go by the highest percent gainers. So I pick that up in the morning. Or you could probably do it in the evening too, yeah. But I, I in, in the morning when I wake up, I start at like, yeah, seven. Yeah, for listed stocks, I like to look in the mornings, see what the top percent gainers are. Because um, when I was just focusing on, focusing on listed stocks, I was up at like 4 o'clock my time after going to bed at like midnight and um, or 5 o'clock and just get my watch list ready and prepared. It's also why I kind of like OTCs because I can sleep until like 5.30. 30 and then um, my watch list is made the night before OTCs they are not open pre-market well they are like a half hour but you can see the gaps and a lot of the times I've seen that if I make my watch list the night before my plans pretty much play out the next morning for OTCs now for listed stocks if I prepared those the night before and I was focusing specifically on the seven step framework Usually the the okay. overall pattern works out, um, but a lot of the intraday stuff, if it was just the panic or the first green day um, on, on the bounce after the panic, um, those would usually play out for my watch list from the night before. But otherwise, I've noticed that just the main patterns are from the same day instead of just the night before because they weren't working out for me as much um so did you ever make them the night before and could you tell a difference hmm. really no not really honestly because i also i have to say i um i mean i get up in the morning and then i look at tim's uh, watch list um i listen to tim bowen uh, every morning um i and then i'm again i'm in the um not um small Cap Rockets with mm -hmm. Price and with Papa John, love Papa John, and with Matt Monaco. Um, so I'm going through their watch list and then I check the chat room. 
that's I think that's a huge resource the, the chat room. So um, because usually what's being chatted about, you know, is something that that really can 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 do well during the day. Um, yeah, so I have like fairly different outlets, and then I have my scanner, and um, that's how I form it. But I can't really do that the night before because the stuff is just not out. Yeah. That makes sense. So um, I'm going to have to wrap it up here soon because I have to make Father's Day dinner for my dad. Um, oh, happy Father's Day. Uh, <laughs> happy Father's Day over there. <laughs> Thank you for spending uh, time with me on this day. Um, but So would you say that small cap rockets, you would recommend that for new traders? Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> And then, it's really, really, really. And, but I'm honestly, I'm the biggest Matt Monaco fan. I mean, uh, <laughs> I should get Matt Monaco's face up here and like with a heart. No, <laughs> I'm not that good at editing. <laughs> sorry, the sun, sorry, I have the sun here on my face, but uh, no, no, I love it. Uh, I think it's very good. And uh, right now, I mean, Papa John is in it, Matt Monaco, um, but who's like the most active? Like, if Rye is joined out of the blue, at least I didn't know. I was like, what's going on? That's awesome. And then I guess my last question, um, what advice do you have for new traders? I think patience. Patience, study hard, and cut your losses quickly. But I think um, you really have to be comfortable with the setups. I sometimes wish I would have waited a little bit longer. Take your time, take, take study, take a trade. Uh, well, that really honestly never really worked out for me, paper trading. Um, but um, be comfortable and um, yeah, study your material. Work very hard. Thank you. I definitely. I've definitely learned a lot. I know a lot of it. I mean, just watching all the other podcasts. I mean, because I was watching the Beyond the PDT where Bryce and Matt Monaco they started that one, and they were hoping that by talking to all of these successful traders, that they'd find that secret to success. And I guess that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to start reaching out and recording and sharing um, these conversations with people as well because I you study so much and then you see people who um, it, it seems like they're so new and they're already profiting and they're doing so well and it's just like man what are they doing that I'm not but it it just seems that shoot I mean I still don't quite have the answer for it but it's almost like as everyone says, everyone's journey is different. Everyone's different. Circumstances are different. And like what you were saying earlier, it's about staying disciplined, finding a discipline that works for you, making sure you're cutting losses quickly, knowing your patterns so you know when to cut those losses quickly versus holding them longer or taking profits or knowing what the chart even looks like to even be able to do that and it's just a long journey that yeah you can see the patterns basically in hindsight from studying but watching them play out is completely different and it it just seems like screen time and like anything else just practice I mean, would you say that pretty much sums it all up, or did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. I think you, you hit the nail on your head. And um, first of all, you're already at home. Thank you so much for reaching out. I completely agree. Trading is a lonely business. Um, we are all here in front of our computers, and so uh, I really appreciate you reaching out and doing that. Um, it has helped me a lot. I listen to um, all these podcasts myself, and that really helps. And uh, I think you summed it up perfectly. I think that's exactly what it is. And every journey is different. Uh, somebody might be great in one year and makes a million in one year and of course market conditions play a role, right? Do you have time? You and I, we have families. Mm -hmm. It is not that easy. Sometimes I wish, honestly, I could just lock myself away for a week and just trade and study. <laughs> no, but for a lot of people it's not possible. It's not possible for me and it's not possible for you. Everybody is different. 
Um, so, but we can only try our best, right? And if we do that, I think then we can be successful. I agree. Well, thank you so much for wanting to talk to me before your busy vacation. I know you're super busy, and I hope you enjoy your time over there. Um, I'll, I guess I'll see you in chat, and um, I'm going to stop this recording real quick, and then I'll thank you again afterwards. So, um, Oh, is there anywhere um, you want people to follow you? Do you want people to follow you on Twitter? I can add your Twitter to the bottom of the description. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm fairly new to all of this, but yeah, Twitter would be great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So, all right, I'm going to stop the recording.